Hello again everybody and welcome to another collection video and this time you're going to part one of my Microsoft Xbox games. Um, so let me talk for a moment about my experience with the Xbox. I don't have an, any experience with the Xbox. I never owned an actual Xbox console. Um, I bought Xbox original Xbox games mainly because the 360 is backwards compatible with quite a few of them, although not all of them, which is a shame, uh, especially because they kind of Microsoft kind of pulled the support for that uh, prematurely, in my opinion. But I have bought a few Xbox games that did work on my 360, some games that I wanted to check out. But I've also been amassing a, a collection of Xbox games that I've just sort of determined that whether I can play them or not right now, uh, I want to own them. And if need be, I will try to get an Xbox console at some point, perhaps one of those ones that's modded to do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but even if I just bought a console with the cables and a controller for as cheap as I could get, I'd probably be happy with that. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the games. Uh, I guess I can mention one more thing about the Xbox. I used to work with a guy who was very, very much a Microsoft guy, and he would uh, give praise all the time to the Xbox, uh, to the point where it got a little frustrating and annoying because he was always knocking the PlayStation 2 uh, in favor of the Xbox. If you love something like that more than something else, that's fine, but I really don't like it when people like literally will put down those who like something different uh, even if the Xbox was graphically uh, more advanced um, it doesn't mean that it's superior and anybody else that likes something else is a fool uh, and that was just kind of the way that I felt like he he did me and a few other people who weren't on board the Xbox train back in the, the mid 2000s so anyway uh, that being said, there is some pretty cool stuff in here, and hopefully I will get to play them someday. Let's start with uh, game number one, and that's Advent Rising. Uh, I, all I can really say about this game, I haven't played it, but uh, I remember it being very interesting, and I like the looks of it, and then when it came out, it got some pretty mediocre reviews. Um, so I don't know if it's really a great game, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, I, I want to try it someday. Uh, next up we have Azuric, Rise of Parathia, or Parathia, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. Um, this falls into a group of just like these action games that I've seen over the years for the Xbox that are only on the Xbox, as it says right up there, only on Xbox, um, that looked cool, and nowadays they're relatively cheap. A lot of the games in this collection of mine are, are pickups because they were cheap. Next game up is Bloodwake, and this is sort of a, a seafaring racing game. Speed headlong into a fast and furious world of savage high seas warfare. Uh, they've got weapons and stuff mounted on them, so I guess think Twisted Metal in the Water. Uh, I've never played it, don't know if it's good or not, but uh, I picked it up because it was cheap. Here's an interesting title and a controversial game, BMX Triple X. Uh, this game started off, I believe, as a Dave Mira BMX game. And for whatever reason or another, because I don't recall the entire story, but Acclaim, who made this game, decided to push the envelope in a completely different direction. And uh, when Dave Mira caught wind of it, he was very upset, didn't want his name associated with it, and I think he even sued Acclaim over it. But, uh, yeah, basically uh, some of the bikers, some of the ladies in here get get topless and show off their boobs and uh, I guess there's also some actual footage of strip club dancing in here. I haven't played it. Uh, it was honestly just one of those games where because of the, the stigma around it I was like I want to have that in my collection so there it is. It was on the PS2 and I believe even the GameCube and I think the GameCube version had uh, censorship in it like the black bars over the parts they didn't want to show. But the fact that it ended up on a Nintendo console, period, is just <laughs> blows me away. Now here we have Broken Sword, The Sleeping Dragon. Uh, I have not played this game, but Broken Sword is... Well, there's a Broken Sword game uh, on the PC that's like one of my favorite point-and-click adventure games. So I jumped on a chance to get a Broken Sword game of any kind 
although I have three or four of them now on the PC. Uh, I can't remember the one from the PC though. It's like smoke and mirrors or something like that. Uh, that one was really good. This one looks interesting. It's 3D graphics and whatnot, but I haven't played that one either. Uh, next up we have Brute Force, and this is another one of those games that back in the 2000s I just always associated with the, the Xbox. It's an only on Xbox game, but when it came through the stores at Walmart and whatnot, it was a pretty popular game uh, for those people who were big uh, Xbox fans. Uh, here's a game that has a little bit of a story behind it. This is Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. Uh, my copy has all these wonderful stickers on it from, uh, where is it from? It says Game World, EB Games down here. But anyway, I'd heard of this game but didn't pay it much mind. Then a favorite YouTuber of mine named Red Wolf Gamer uh, actually played it. Gosh, it's been like a year and a half if not more uh, on his channel <clears throat> and he went way through it and it was a really interesting game and I was really getting into it I didn't figure I'd ever play it otherwise I don't really like to watch let's plays of games that I think I will be interested in but uh, I I decided to watch his let's play of it and, and try to go all the way through with it and then he stopped playing it I'd say pretty close to the end and it was a big disappointment I was like hoping it one of these days it would come back to his channel so when it didn't uh, I decided a while back to try to track down a copy of it myself hopefully this will play on my 360 and I'll get a chance to check it out because it was a really interesting game kind of a third person uh, shooter game but not like Call of Duty you don't run around and, and it's slow and, and it has a slower pace some stealth and whatnot involved in it all right, next game I got here is called Chicago Enforcer. Don't know anything about this game, just that it was cheap when I picked it up, and that's how it ended up in my collection. Um, I got two games to show off here, and I think this is just another case of me being stupid when I'm shopping for games. We have Crimson Skies and Crimson Skies. <clears throat> Only difference, this is the Platinum Hits version. So unless there's a reason why like the Platinum Hits version maybe has some additional stuff to it, I just ended up with two copies of it. And that was just, I guess you would call a derp moment on my part. <clears throat> okay, next up we have here uh, Dead or Live Ultimate. And this is the Double Disc Collector's Edition. It has Dead or Alive 1 Ultimate, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate. I actually had more Dead or Alive games a while back. In fact, I started to like stockpile a collection of them. And then as I played through them, I was like, eh, I'm not really all that interested in them. Fighting games, just not my thing. I have a story that's attached to the PlayStation 1 Dead or Alive game, but I'll cover that when I do my PlayStation 1 collection. Uh, but this was the only thing out of all those Dead or Alive games that I couldn't get rid of like a year or two ago when I went to uh, sell them all off. Next up we have Deus Ex Invisible War. Uh, I'm a fan of the first Deus Ex game, but even though I haven't really played that much of it, so I was trying to piece together all the Deus Ex games that I could, uh, and this is one of them, so I haven't played it. I think that's kind of, it's not one of the better uh, Deus Ex games in the series from what I've heard. Uh, next up we have Dino Crisis 3. I did a uh, favorite games installment about Dino Crisis, the first one in general, and I showed this one off, but I have never played this one. I'm turned off by the idea that it's like all in space and stuff, and it doesn't include Regina or people from the original one. I, I don't understand the reasoning for going to a, a whole new setting, but whatever. Uh, next up is a game I'm not even really sure if I can call it mine. Uh, it belonged to a friend of mine who gave it to me uh, when I first got my 360. But honestly, I don't know for sure if it was meant for me to keep it or not. Uh, but this is one of the games I've always wanted to play, and I did play a little bit of it uh, when I first got it. But anyway, it's Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. This is the Game of the Year edition that comes with the Tribunal and Blood Moon DLC. Um... It's really, really cool. I kind of wish I would have played it when it first came out because after having had some time with Oblivion and, Mar and uh, Skyrim, going back and playing Morrowind with its 
graphics, you know, uh, they're not very comparable to the newer versions. But uh, that's a game right there that I know I could invest like hundreds of hours into. Okay, next up we have a game called Enclave. And uh, all I can really say about this one is it looks like your typical, uh, it says hand-to-hand -hand combat. I see a lady with spiky armor up against some sort of a winged beast. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Here we have a sealed and never opened copy of Fight Club for the Xbox. I bought this because it was cheap. Uh, I am not a fan of the Fight Club movie. Please don't hate me for that. I just, I guess I just don't get it. Uh, I don't get the game. I, I take it that it's some sort of a fighting game. It looks silly. It's, it's a movie based game so it's probably not very good. That's why I haven't opened it and like I said I bought it because it was cheap. Ah, here we have ourselves some swashbuckling action a game called Galleon. Uh, it's definitely a piratish style game. Uh, when it comes to the internet's battle of ninjas versus pirates, I'm a totally a ninja guy, uh, but I can still stand some pirate stuff. Uh, so this one looked like it might be interesting, and it was cheap, uh, but I haven't played that one. Here's something I mentioned in my uh, GameCube collection, and this is my copy of Gun for the original Xbox. Uh, I just have a collection of the Gun games. I'm going to get it for everything that it was available for, on which the only thing I don't have right now is a PC copy. Um, but there's Gun. It was a very, very good game for its time as far as Western uh, open world gaming was concerned, but then Red Dead Redemption came along and blew it out of the water. All right, here's a couple of big uh, Microsoft games, and I can tell you right now, I've never played either one of these. Uh, we've got Halo Combat Evolved, and I've got a limited collector's edition steelbook version of Halo 2. I do believe this is missing like a, a slip cover on the outside, but uh, it's still, you know, has the, the disc and the booklet inside of it here. Uh, it's got two discs limited collector's edition disc underneath the game disc. I question a game company's decision to put uh, two discs underneath each other like that, but whatever. I don't have anything against Halo, I just, like I said before, I didn't have an Xbox when it was popular and uh, therefore I didn't play the Halo games. Next up here we have Hitman 2 and this, amongst a few other games in this collection, uh, were uh, prizes that I won from another subscriber contest from VT Gamer uh, 11 Gamer Girl, I'm sorry. Um, and the Hitman series, as far as that is concerned, uh, I've always thought they were a cool series and wanted to try them out. So I've kind of pieced together several Hitman games on that on Xbox here and uh, PlayStation 2. Now this one here has got no. Uh, cover artwork, but this is another game that I picked up from VT Gamer Girl 11, and this is The Hobbit. Uh, I've been trying to track down that cover artwork because everything else here is complete, uh, but I haven't played that game. Uh, I'll probably give it a try sometime though. I remember my friend who I, I mentioned before, who was a big Xbox guy, uh, he, he said that he played it back in the day and he enjoyed it. Uh, next up is Indigo Prophecy. Uh, I currently have this for the Xbox. I don't think I have it for the uh, PS2, which was a console I originally played this on. But if you saw my Dreamcast collection video, uh, I mentioned Omicron, Omicron the Nomad Soul. Uh, this game was done by the same person who did Omicron. And this was a really, really cool game. I myself have never completed it, but I did watch a playthrough of it by PewDiePie, who did complete it, and it's very interesting game. It gets really weird uh, before the game is over. Alright, and this is the last game I'm going to show here in part one to keep things from going uh, way overboard. But this is a really good one. This one was a game like the day I picked it up, I sat down and popped it in the 360 to make sure I could play it and it, it, it came up and I was really intrigued by it. It's from Bioware. Uh, you, if you're following the alphabet here, you know that it's not a particular Star Wars game. Rather, this is Jade Empire, limited edition copy. Um, 
it's from the people who made Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and those are very, very popular RPGs. Um, the Jade Empire is equally as awesome from what I got to play of it. I was uh, definitely down. Uh, this is the main disc. And then underneath is the limited edition bonus content disc. It's very, very cool, and I'm sad that I jumped into it and enjoyed it so much and then never went back and played it anymore after that but uh, I've got so many games right now that I'm like in the middle of and so many things that distract me away from my gaming time but this one definitely warrants getting back to in the near future so that wraps up part one of my uh, Xbox collection I uh, hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for part two coming up soon